Hi. Okay. Today we're going to talk about Kvitlach. Kvitlach is a Hanukkah game. I know we all know about dreidel, the much uh, well-known and uh, not quite very interesting spin uh, the top game of Hanukkah. But Kvitlach is another iconic game of the holiday Hanukkah. When I was a child, this was my experience with Kvitlach. Our family did not consider it kosher. Many girls in my social world did play Kvitlach, and I would often hear them say, I won $60 last night playing Kvitlach. And I'd be like, what? I won three cents playing dreidel and four jelly beans. I had no idea how people made so much money playing this game. And I wasn't allowed to go play whenever the girls got together to play because it was not kosher. My parents said kuten, which was another word for kvitlach, was bad. So yesterday I was in the Hasidic toy store and I saw a game, the game of kvitlach. I was there to get a couple of dreidels as a souvenir for my tourists. And um, I saw this game of kvitlach and I grabbed it. Um, because I compulsively buy stuff in Hasidic toy stores. And to my absolute surprise, it was $13. See, that's my dreidel for 50 cents. And it's, it was $13 for a deck of cards. Um, I thought it would be like $1.99. I was very surprised. Why would um, cards be so expensive? I have no idea what this game is and how you play it. Um, but I come home, I look at it. It says, Ferd Piatnik Zona. Veen, 16, on one of the cards. This is how the deck looks. This is the cards. What, the number two also says, Fine it quickly carton. Um, and the box says that it is the original and authentic Piotnik cards manufactured in Wien, Austria which really surprised me because most games that are specific to the community, and there are many, many, many mm -hmm. games, um, are usually, it's, let's see how we can turn off the sound on that. I don't know how to turn off the sound. Can you see that? There's another shell to set. But these games, and I have here, one example of the games that are produced specifically for the community. They are made in China. So you can see it says made in China. Uh, they're generally manufactured in China by Hasidic uh, companies that manufacture them there and bring it in here. So I was very surprised that these cards are actually manufactured in Vienna, in Wien. Um, and it also had on it uh, a little sticker on, on top that said, for game instructions, please email. So, of course, I have no idea how to play this game. So I sent them an email. I said, hi, please send me the Kvitlach instructions. And to my absolute surprise, I get back an email from the seller, the toy store, Lee Avenue Photo, instead of getting the instructions from the manufacturer. So I'm buying a deck of cards that comes out of Wien, uh, out of Vienna, and... Um, I don't know why I'm saying Bean. Uh, and the instructions aren't there. And it says that you can get the instructions which you get from the toy store. It feels almost like I'm entering the underground world of the Kvitlach secret society with, if you email, we will let you know how to play this game. So anyway, on to Wikipedia, of course, to see what Kvitlach are. Um, is a card game similar to 21? I don't play any poker, so I really don't know what 21 is, but it's pretty much a poker kind of game. Played in some Ashkenazi Jewish homes, which is Eastern European, essentially Jewish homes or descendants of, during the Hanukkah season. The game and deck were created by Hasidic Jews living in Galicia, which is a fun country, during the 18th or 19th century. Most packs used to play the game consist of 24 cards with identical pairs numbered from 1 to 12. The pack may have originated from Hexenspiel decks by stripping them of picture cards so as to avoid idolatry. Jews did not use popular playing cards because the crosses and other Christian symbols found on them, using instead an often handmade deck of cards called Kvitlach Lamet Alefniks, which means 31ers, 
Klein Shas, which means small Talmud, or Tilamul, which means the Book of Psalms. The cards were decorated with Hebrew numerals and common objects such as teapots, feathers, and sometimes portraits of biblical Hebrew uh, heroes, which obviously none of these are in the deck of cards now. It's just numbers. Uh, Piatnik and Sone of Vienna was the largest producer of these cards during the 19th and 20th century, which helped spread the game among Jews living in Austria, Hungary, and the North America diaspora. So obviously it's a variation of some kind of card game that had pictures on it that weren't kosher and were removed so that the game no longer looks like this. It is now only pretty much the numbers on them. And I looked up the company Piatnik and Zona, which is still in existence. And they have an online shop with all sorts of cards. Um, and you can get alles gut zum celebrat, gut zum, everything well to celebrate. Austrian German is closer in dialect to Yiddish than German German. So they have all sorts of uh, funky designs of their cards, sort of uh, fun themes, ballet, um, 1950s, beach, Bruegel classic cars, Crikey, Crikey the character. Uh, yeah, I looked for Kvitlach and there was nothing there, no response. I looked for Kvitl, there wasn't there anything either. So I sent them an email. I said, I'm writing to inquire if they manufacture the Kvitl cards. And they responded saying, dear Mrs. Weisel, I'm sorry to inform you that we do not produce these cards. I have no idea where these cards are produced. Um, that makes them so expensive. If you buy them on Amazon, they're actually $20, $22. Um, but they are, they're sol solid cards. Maybe that's what you pay anytime you buy um, expensive, real technology, uh, black card, black technology cards. Um, that's it with... Uh, now I'm going to go um, learn the game because so far, <laughs> Kvitlich has had me out $13 and uh, I got to win it back.